This podcast is sponsored by Magic Rock Brewing. Currently, you can get free delivery on all orders over £40 and 10% of all online orders by using our code of TakesThatChance10. Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. Down the left and Moy stayed onside. Here's Mounier. 2 0 on a field down on the opening day of the Premier League. One two wicket from Here's Moy right footed. 1 0 on a field down. Lindelof misses his header. De Poitras in. Round to Heya. 2 0 on a field down. 2 0 on a field down. Here's Sanka to turn it into the pass. Yes! Yeah. Tommins scored! <laughs> Tommins has scored! One of the most important goals of Huddersfield Town's history! De Plattras forward, De Plattras got the better yes! of <laughs> And Laurent De Plattras scores! Laurent De Plattras scores! Okay, so it's a new season and that means a new series of the warm-up. Welcome to the warm-up episode 34. Um, Joining me, your host, Brady Frost, to preview Huddersfield Town's Carabao Cup match against Sheffield Wednesday is my new co-host, Josh Phillips. Josh, how are you? Good evening. Very well, thanks. Excited to to be getting going with the warm-up this season, led by yourself. Uh, Yeah, well, you know, co-led because it's going to be a joint... Uh, co thing and Josh, we are um, we're going to make things a little bit different. Are we? We're going to make it a bit more fun. Seeing as um, yeah. watching town the last couple of years probably hasn't been the most fun for fans. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Inject a bit of fun into proceedings with a few little games, a few little features. Um, just try and uh, make things a bit lively. If we are on a, a bad run, we can always play a little game while we're while we're being depressed. <laughs> Exactly, you know, we can hide hide the tears with uh, with some laughter and that. Okay, so joining uh, joining Josh and I is uh, someone's voice people are familiar with, and maybe if you watch it on YouTube, his face too. It's Mr. Matt Shaw. Matt, how are you? Hi, mate. I'm good, thanks. It's like a tennis match more than football. That we two back and forth then. Oh, uh, how you. are you doing? You're both good. Yeah, yeah, both good, mate. Yeah, really good. Good, they're excited. Good. Good. Excited for the season. Well, as much as you can be, you know, before it kicks off. But um, you know. Well, let's not talk about Fleetwood. But Josh, we mentioned some games. Um, you said we're going to kick things off with a game before we start previewing the uh, the Carabao Cup game. So I'll let, yeah. let you go on. Okay, so the game is called Trash Talk. It's uh, I've ripped it off somewhere else, basically. It has another name, but we won't tell them that. Is it pointless? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. But okay. it could be. It could be pointless. So, um, <laughs> Brady and Matt, I'm going to ask you a question relating to this weekend's game. And after I ask that question, you will both auction each other um, for who's, got, who's going to say the most answers to it. And then the person who, if, if, you're the, if you say to the person, right, I don't believe you can say that many, you're talking trash, then that other person has to say the number that they said they could name in 30 seconds. It sounds do this with the darts, don't you? We do it with the darts, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, we may or may not have got that from somewhere else. Um, as well but um, it it works pretty nicely so uh, let's see if we can uh, do the same here so the question is how many Sheffield Wednesday managers can you name since 2010 so I will go to Matt first how many do you think you can name Uh, without googling now uh, right, I remember who their manager is now. I remember that guy. I remember that guy. I need a number. I can't, you can't be saying all what you can remember. I need a number. You're going to be disqualified in a minute, mate. Four. Four. Brady, any advances on four? Uh, I could do five, I reckon. Five? Matt, is he talking trash? Since 2010. Do... Since 2010. Yeah, or can you do six? Um... Or are you going to call him out? I can't remember what that other guy was called. Otherwise, I would cut, I would go six. But I'm going to call out Brady Frost. He's talking trash. He's talking trash, Brady. Right. 
I will start the countdown very shortly once I get it on my phone. So what's that, five? Should have, should have prepared this, but yeah. So you've got to name five Sheffield Wednesday managers as listed on Wikipedia. I will only accept those answers since 2010. So we know, so we know that's where all the truth is. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you cannot have edited that. So the time, you've got 30 seconds. Time starts now. Gary Monk. Um, yes. Carlos Calvajal. Yes, that's two. Tony Pulis. Three. Um, Darren Moore. Yeah, one more. You've got 15 seconds. Oh, um, oh there was that guy who filled in. Think of Red Dwarf. I'm going to help him. It's what? a game. It's um, Five seconds. Oh, oh, I don't know. Is it Connor Sellers or is that the Bradford guy? Who? Uh, I don't know who that is, but he's not on this list. <laughs> so, Matt wins. Yay. Oh, you could have had Steve Bruce. Oh, Megson. I was, I was thinking Megson with Smeg from the... Yeah. That yeah. Was what was Alan going. Irvine, Brian Laws, Dave Jones. Oh, they've had loads, Joss, haven't they? Joss Lukai. That's the guy yeah, I can that's remember. The, yeah. I, I can remember his first name, Josh. That's all of them. Anyway, so <laughs> good start to the show the, from that. Who was the guy? Sorry, the, not I, I, I've accepted that I lost. Who was the guy who filled in after Pulis before they hired Darren Moore? Um, oh, is it I, Lee Bullen? I don't know. Is it Lee Bullen? They had the, he yeah. used to fill in, didn't he, every now and then, Lee Bullen as the caretaker, didn't he? Yeah, I think you're right. I don't, know, I don't know if that is the guy, but he usually is the one who leaves. We'll it's we'll say not it permanent is. manager, so it doesn't count. Anyway, sorry. No. Yeah, that was a good start. I've already lost in the, the first game of the season. So. Well, I thought you were going to do it. You had you named four in no. ten seconds. You named like yeah, three, I was... three. I didn't. I couldn't remember. I was like, because oh, I was yeah. going Dave Jones, Megs, and I was going ten to <laughs> upwards. I was like, and then I was like Carlos, and I mean, I was struggling. I was struggling after four. Anyway, that was fun, wasn't it? That was fun, and we, as we all know, forced fun is the best fun. Yeah. Um, so anyway. <laughs> This I don't know how you guys feel about this game. Uh, if we if we're kind of jumping on to to preview on Wednesday, um, because it's a bit of a weird one. Obviously, they were they were in the championship last season. Arguably, they would have stayed up maybe if uh, and we would have gone down if it wasn't for that points deduction. Um, but we've seen Town don't really win cup games. They haven't won a cup game since 2017. Um, so I, I don't really know what to expect with this one. Um, obviously, Wednesday they seem to. A loss, yeah, probably, if we're judging on previous form. Um, but they seem, I think Wednesday have signed a, a quite a few good players, to be honest. Um, some players, particularly, I, I saw Lewis Wayne, um, who I think is yeah, good that. for us. Okay. Yeah, in League One, that's a, that's a great signing. Um, obviously, they kept Bannon, although there's rumours that he's leaving. But um, Josh, how are you feeling about this one? Because it's um, obviously we've seen Town don't take the cup seriously, but. Mm. It, you know, we saw how poor we were towards the end of the last season, and I feel like it's a good opportunity to maybe put out a strong team and get a win. But what about yourself? Yeah, well, with the um, six day turnaround, I'd, I'd like to think we'd put out a strong team for this game. Um, but it's, it's sort of with the, the way the pandemic's affected the early rounds of the Carabao Cup, um, we've obviously taken the option to move it forward a week. So it does, I think, waters it down even more. Um, it makes it more of a friendly feel, I think, uh, with the Rochdale game last year. Like, yes, we were obviously trying to win the game, but it just felt a bit like, oh, well, it wasn't, it didn't, we didn't really matter about that game. Um, I hope that's not the attitude we've got um, for this game because I think we need a win, to be honest, even though it, we're not going to win this cup, obviously, but just for morale, um, I think it'd do more harm uh, to lose the game. It would... It would um, Things are already a bit sort of negative after that Fleetwood result and people are questioning things. I think the club need to win this game just to take a bit of the pressure off. Um, it won't it won't make people happy. It, well, it won't make everyone happy. You know, People say, well, you've only beaten Sheffield Wednesday in the Carabao Cup. But I think just to stop people um, getting, uh, you know, on, the, on the, uh, the bandwagon of negativity, I think um, the club needs to, to get a win from this game. So I'd put a strong team out. Um, I think we can win the game. Um, if, uh, last season's anything to go by. They weren't. They were no great shakes. Sheffield Wednesday. And I do think we've got. You know, I've got some decent players. So I'm. Uh, I'm hopeful, but I always am, and then end up getting my hopes dashed. That's the way, man. That's the way, Matt. What about yourself? Are you? Are you thinking um, this is an opportunity to put a, a? Well, do you think we should put out a strong team and, and kind of go for this one and try and get a win? 
Yeah, I do really. Um, this is it's it's not a big game, but it's an important game because you look at we mentioned on the uh, the preview show at the well the season preview that you know Carlos starts the season under pressure really because you know he's won three of the last twenty five, which you know a lot of people say right that's a clean slate for Carlos going into a new season, new players, clean slate. But I can guarantee that if he doesn't get off to a winning start, people will then say. He's only won three from 26, three from 27, three from, you know. So I think there is a pressure. And I think getting off to an early win against either Sheffield Wednesday or Derby will just nip that in the bud nice and early. And then I think that will, I think only with a win will he get that clean slate, if you like. So I do think it's important. I have a hunch or a feeling that the club may treat this as a final league warm-up game rather than uh, a cup game, which is my worry. So I, I do think we might see a bit of a mix of a side. And I think he might use it as a final fitness game because we, we have to remember the game got moved forward or backwards, depending on the way you look at your calendar. Uh, and two, I think we, we had to cancel two preseason games, didn't we? So I would imagine that Carlos is still sort of in the midst of, you know, everything that he's planned throughout preseason has been thrown a little bit. So I do think that he will look at this game and he'll think, do you know what? These are my final uh, preparations going into the season. So I do think we'll see a bit of a, a mixed side, but I do think it's important to get off to a win either here or at Derby. Yeah, I think it's a big opportunity for us, to be honest. Um, playing a team in League One, all right, they're, they're not they're a better League One side than most, but playing them and then Derby, there's a chance there to get off to a good start. So I hope we do. No, I think you're right. I, I mean, something we haven't talked about um, really as well is that obviously fans are going to be back in. You know, I know, <laughs> I know, Matt uh, Cosy would would mention it quite a lot every week about fans and when they click turn, through we'll that turnstile so I can go in. You know, that's usually yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so <laughs> you know, it's um, again Yorkshire Derby. You know, first game of the season for uh, you know, and for a lot of people, and I think it'll be a good game. And um, you know, that, that could have an interesting effect. We saw um, we saw last season when fans went in. You know, it was an opportunity for players who maybe uh, struggle in front of fans like Hamer, we talked about, seem to improve with no fans. But also you could equally say with this, maybe with the crowd back, um, some players could you know, really benefit from that and get a, a, a kind of a boost, really. Um, was there anyone for town you'd, you've kind of singled out for this game or anyone you thought you'd like? Uh, obviously, we had key players before, but is there anyone you kind of like the look of or you think uh, we should be focusing on in this game? Uh, that, I'd like that, to... Sorry, is that Josh? Well, I'll go, uh, I'll go first. Jump in. Go, go Josh. Go. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see Sober Thomas start the game. I think every time he plays, he's really positive. He brings a lot of energy. Um, he seems someone that's uh, you know, really just determined to do well, and he seems to have a really good attitude. So uh, he's impressed so far in pre-season, so I'd give him a go. Um, I know he prefers, he prefers being on the left, doesn't he? But I'd, I'd have him on the right and uh, Karoma on the left. But for me, I think... Big problem for us last season was uh, defensively. Um, so I think getting a, a settled back four um, that played together most weeks, I'd like to see that. And personally, I'd, I'd like to see um, Nichols be our starting keeper um, for the for the league season. But I don't think whoever plays in goal against Wednesday, it may it may not necessarily mean they're playing the next week. So I think that position is still up for grabs. So. Um, whoever gets the shirt against Wednesday will have uh, a big opportunity to, you know, to keep it for the following week. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about yourself, Matt. Um, I think that's a good shout, Josh, about Sober Thomas. I think he's had a very good preseason, and uh, arguably, you know, the, the right side. Um, if Colbrand's going to play four three three, that's still kind of up for grabs. And I think Sober's, you know, done done good work in preseason to kind of maybe earn that, you know, earn that starting. Starting birth, particularly in the league, but um, Josh, you talked about the the keeper, Matt. I'm going to come to you. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Nichols starts this and then Schofield starts the league. But um, who you can obviously talk about that. But who else did you kind of single out as a, as a key player for this game? You've stolen my thunder a bit with that because that's exactly what I think will happen with Nichols starting against Sheffield Wednesday, and then everyone will think, "Oh, Nichols is going to start the season," and then you'll roll down to Pride Park and Ryan Schofield's in goal. I think that will probably happen. Uh, and if it does, um, then hopefully Ryan, you know, hopefully Ryan lifts his levels and, you know, to a certain point that he keeps Nichols out. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So for me, yeah, Matt, uh, Sauber Thomas is uh, someone who I liked when he when he came in last season. He's, you know, from from when I speak to people who are a little bit more connected, if you like, 
they 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 often say you know how great his his attitude is you know and he's always with the analysts he's always trying to learn he's always really sort of pushing you know pushing himself you can see he's lost weight from when he first came in you know his shape's different you know he's a lot leaner you know he's he looks you know he looks like a, a top footballer and the way he spoke as well in the the interview uh, that he did after um, after the last preseason game was was really good. You can see he's focused, you know, and and I like a lot of what I see. I like what I've seen of Scott High at the end of last season and and against Fleetwood as well. I think there's a, a player there who's got a really good range of passing. He's just not quite there yet positionally, but he's coming along quite nicely. But I think what's quite key, and maybe I'll, I'll pick something that you two have not said, is that I think it's really key that Danny Ward or Jordan Rhodes get off to a goal, st- goal scoring start as soon as possible. Especially Danny Ward, you know, he's got what did he get one last season against Coventry towards the end. As it as it stands, I think Danny Ward will probably be the starter of the the, the month of the three, uh, and I think it's very key to especially fans back in the ground. You know, no one was impressed with Danny Ward last season. Let's be honest, uh, he had a lot of injuries, a lot of things going on. It would be great for Danny Ward to get off to a goal scoring start. I think it's really key that either him or Jordan get an early goal just to just to get not just necessarily to get people on side, but just for confidence levels and you know to get going to get up and running. So if both can score, fantastic, but. For me, one of the strikers getting off the mark nice and early will, will settle a few nerves, I think. And also the new guy that's coming, Brady, which you can you can pick up on. Oh, well, uh, you kind of stole my I'll leave you something. Yeah, I'll leave you something. Oh, thank you. But um, no, no, I, I was actually going to say Danny Ward's my, my key player for this game, um, just because I, I agree 100% with what he said. Um, you know, he described last season himself as a, as a nightmare. Mm. Um, which is completely understandable given how injury prone he was. And I, I completely agree with you, you know, um, I suppose we'll come on to it. We're not, we're not really doing a season preview here, but um, chance creation concerns me. But the thing we've heard time and time again is same with Rhodes, same with Ward. You know, they are good finishers. Um, but again, we need to create chances to see that. Um, yeah. We did see, you touched on his goal against uh, Coventry. He did, Ward did take that very well. And um, I think this is the type of game where I, I probably, I don't know if you guys think this, we've maybe touched upon it. Um I do think it is going to be, like you said, Matt, a little bit like a final preseason game. So I don't think it'll be the, f- the strongest start in 11. I think it'll be a bit of a mix. And um, I think this would be a good opportunity for Ward um, to, to kind of make his market, I suppose. And particularly uh, from what we saw against Fleetwood, it looks a bit rusty uh, and some of the other preseason games as well. So that's uh, that's kind of my my guy I've singled out. But um, yeah, Siani, um, again, I wonder if he'll play a part of this game. But um yeah, interestingly, we thought some of us thought he might be a striker, but it seems like he's going to be that kind of attacking, attacking spark. Matt, um, I'll, I'll do a flip reverse. I'll come back to you and then go to Josh. But um, yeah, what, what do you think of Siani? Like, are you as a signing? Do you know, we don't know how it's going to work out, but um, I think it could be potentially quite exciting. Not going to lie, I'd never heard of him until the other day. Not heard of him at all. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that you know I've looked at his stats and I know all about him. I know nothing. All I've done is the you know, same as everybody else. He got. Mentioned the other day by, I think, Peter Rock was one of the first to mention him because he'll love that because, you know, he bags Peter Rock. And he he mentioned him. I looked him up. I saw his goal-scoring record for, is it Duda Lange, the, um, the Luxembourg team I think he played for and noticed he'd been out of Belgium last year and they got relegated via a playoff. But his stats were okay. You know, numbers are they're okay for him. Uh, Norwich, I believe that we might have been interested in him previously as well and it's just a chance that's come back around to sign him. Uh, yeah, we needed... Uh, we needed someone in that position. So looking from the video, which is all we've got, you know, a couple of minute videos here and there, he uh, runs with the ball. He looks quite creative. He's, you know, he's quite, he's got a good left foot on him. It looks more of a right-sided player to me, you know, in a lot of the, in a lot of the stuff that we saw, uh, potentially can come in onto that left foot. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully is, hopefully is the answer to that question. Because for me, uh, Josh mentioned last year, the defense was a real problem. And it was, we, we considered the most goals in the league. Uh, but for me as well, creating chances is also a massive problem for us as well. Um, you know, if we're not creating anything at the other front, it puts pressure on the defence to keep it out. And likewise, if the defence do something stupid, it puts pressure either way. And for me, we don't create enough. We didn't create enough against Fleetwood. So this uh, this sign of Sinani, there's a lot of pressure going on to his shoulders to be able to be the man who pulls the strings, you know, to, to create something for us and, and be that one behind the striker who can do something. So, you know, big things are hoped for. Uh, and we'll we'll see how it gets on. Yeah, Josh, what about yourself? How, how do how do you feel about the transfer? Uh, obviously, it's the latest one to. It was uh, at time of recording. It was yesterday. It went through. So hot off the press. 
Well, you know I like my Luxembourg football. So it's the man I've been watching for many years. No, I'm joking. Um, same as you, I'd, I'd never heard of him. But, um, you know, if Norwich took a punt on him, he must have something um, about him. And uh, as you said, we were previously interested. So um, you'd like to think the club know what they're doing on this one. Um, as you say, he looks decent on his uh, YouTube videos, but I think you could do a, a compilation of me and, you, you know, you could say, oh, he looks a decent player. But, um, it was like a challenge. Yeah, well, that, that will be a challenge, to be honest. Take a good video yeah. editor with that, to be fair. It would, it would, yeah. But you know what I mean? It, it, it's impossible to judge off a video. I think yeah. it's just one of those, we've just got to wait and see um, how he goes for us. But yeah, judging off the clips, he does look like he likes to cut in off off the right-hand side and have a uh, shot with his left foot. So I think we might start him in the middle. And if it's not working from there, I think he might get uh, pushed out into the right. Um, but if he, if he does, um, if he does, that does happen, then Karoma on the left and uh, uh, Sinani on the right, they like to both cut in. And I think that would be good for Pippa and Toffolo uh, going around on the overlap. I think that would be a quite a good balance to the team to have the same sort of, um, chemistry on both sides but yeah he, can, he definitely can hit a ball can't he um, he's got a good strike on him set pieces as well apparently yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Albert Thomas is good at set pieces so you know options are opening up a little bit aren't they definitely I still think I still think we need a, another midfielder um, if as I predict he does get become more of a wide player but I suppose time will tell on that one um, cause if he's if he's no good in the middle and um, we've got Bakuna who can play sort of that attacking midfield role, but he might be going. Um, and apart from that, you know, we're, we're a bit struggling, aren't we, creativity-wise. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful he can be a good signing. He's got something to prove in England. Um, and he, that comes across when he when he's speaking and his interviews. He seems like someone who, um, he, he really wants to make a mark in the English game. So um, He obviously knows his football as well, Josh, because he described us as a massive club in his interviews. So, you know, he's obviously exactly, yeah. pushed on as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, all all the usual uh, cliches, uh, buzzing to be in front of the fans and all that. Yeah, but um, yeah, let's let's see how this one goes. I'm optimistic. That's what we like to hear, mate. And um, yeah, Siani, he seems to be uh, quite varied. I know they were saying about an attacking mid, but we, you know, from the clips and from what we've seen, he can play across the front three. And you know, Corbran likes his four three three, and um, Sometimes that means the striker drop, dropping deep, so Siani could do that role as well. But um, you know, why not? I, I, we've had a lot of miserable, uh, miserable time talking about town. So uh, let's get a little bit excited. I think you know this is he looks like an exciting player. So um, you know, let's let's hope he is. And um, I, I would put him in for this game. Really, just get get his fitness up. I know he's played last season, but uh, let's get him in there. I'd, I'd probably but, bring off the bench, but I'm just thinking of another player I remember, Dwayne Holmes. Could this affect where he plays for town? Because um, obviously you've got uh, Sinani and Holmes who can both play central or right. So I guess it'll be about finding which way around is best for the team. My opinion is Holmes central, Sinani on the right. It sounds better to me. But I guess we'll we'll find out which is the best combination of those two uh, when the season starts. I think that's a good point, but uh, Corbrand seems to put uh, Holmes on the right all the time. So I, I agree. I think pretty much every town fan, well, most town fans would uh, like to see Holmes in in midfield because when he joined, that's where he said his best position is. So mm. um, I think he's uh, got a bit of the versatility curse there, just sticking yeah. to fill all. So we'll see. But Matt, um, you look, you know, really interested at the moment. So I'll come to you. Is there anyone for Wednesday you, you picked out as key player? Yes. Um, I think they might be in the same boat, to be honest. Uh, as, as us, you know, it might be a bit of a fight, you know, like a tune up game, possibly. Uh, um, Barry Ban is always, you know, he's always mm. a decent player. I think he would, he would suit us down to the ground as well if he was ours. Um, yeah, so Barry Bannon's decent. Louis Swing's a really good signing for them, for them as well. Him and him and Bannon together in midfield. Louis Swing's really good box to box, isn't he? Um, a, a player I, I like a lot. Uh, Callum Patterson is quite dangerous as well. I think Josh Windass is still there, isn't he, at the time of recording as well. And Josh loves playing against us because he has a little bit of a bee in a bonnet about uh, us releasing him at 18. So he loves to mm-hmm. stick one in the net against us. So fair play. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and they've signed a new keeper as well. Peacock Farrell uh, is interesting as well. He's probably an upgrade from what they had last year. So, you know, very interesting. I think Sheffield Wednesday are just in the 
you know, proceeds of putting together a, a team that they hope can compete. So I think they might be a bit mishmash, but so I think it'll be the older ones that have been there a little while, like Barry Bannon, who'll be the, the ones who'll, who'll cause the most, uh, most damage. And uh, I think Darren Moore liked to play a back three last year. So more of a three, four, one, two system. Uh, so for me, when you do that, your wing backs have got to be really key as well at get, being able to get up and down. And you need someone like Barry Bannon to, to not waste the ball in possession as well, because once that wing backs got up there, you know, it's a long way back. And if you lose the ball, as we saw time and time again, and so against Fleetwood, uh, you know, your you midfield really needs to be touched tight and uh, and keep the ball. So uh, that was the long answer. The short answer is Barry Bannon. I like that, mate. And I'm going to jump in here because you talked about the wing bats. Um, wing, wing backs, I should say, not the wing backs. Uh, but, the Lewis wing backs. No, exactly. Um, but what I'm going to, I was going to, it's a bit of a tap in really. Um, as I said to you guys, I only got in. Uh, got home about an hour ago, but um, you know the classic uh, former player playing against you wants to do well. I think Jaden Brown got a point to prove. Um, oh, I we thought you were going to go for the uh, the one I, who's uh, who, who, well. who we questioned his uh, parentage last time. Well, yeah, no, going to be mine. Oh, yeah, well, Jaden was going to be yours. Oh no, Jack, Jack, on. Jack. All right, well, we'll come on to you, but yeah, um, yeah, no, Jaden for me. Um, Again, debatable this one, but I think he was really unlucky. He played really well, and then Toffler came in, and Toffler was just better than him. Um, and then he really struggled, and Carlos didn't seem to fancy him. I think, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see if he can play a full season in League One because, um, you know, still a young lad, obviously, really fancied at Tottenham um, before he joined us. And yeah, I, I think he'll, again, a bit like Windass, have a point to prove. So I think he, he could be quite dangerous against us. So, uh, that's where I've gone for. But speaking of former town wing backs, uh, <laughs> Josh, Jack, oh, yeah. tell us more. Yeah. Well, that was just one that stood out to me. You know, he's, he's openly said that he, for some reason, well, we know why, but he uh, really wants to beat town every time uh, we play against him. So he'll be bang up for it. Um, he's, you know, he's, for League One level, he's, I think he's one of the best right backs in the league, to be honest, if you can stay fit. So he was one that I um, am wary of. And uh, another one, Josh Windass, he's already been mentioned. Um, I used to report a bit on Accrington um, when I used to I'd do a bit for the league football league paper and they sent me to a few Accrington games. And uh, Windass and Matt Crooks at the time, who they were ripping it up in League Two. And then they both got the transfers to Rangers. And I always thought uh, Windass, that he'd make a very good championship player. So I was a bit surprised um, to see him. He didn't struggle last season, but, you know, he didn't, he was in a losing team, so it's obviously harder, but he didn't really have the impact that he wanted. But I do think there's still a very good player in there. And I think he potentially one of the best players in League One. And I think he'll be he'll be out to to prove himself that he's uh, above this level. So I think he's he's my one to watch out for. I think he's a very good player. Absolutely. Um and obviously it's uh, speaking of former players, I suppose it's a good time to move on to everyone's favourite. Uh, segment of the, of the warm up. It's uh, return to the Mac. Um, we still I'm going need to first. Aramoy. That's it. Aramoy. Okay. <laughs> He's dropped the mic. Yeah, I think that's pretty good, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can expand yeah. on that more. I okay. just really wanted to get that in first. Sorry, before uh, uh, before it got it got stolen from me last season, and then when we wiped the slate clean, it got stolen again. So you know, I have to get in there quickly just before you do. So Matt, tell 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 the listeners <laughs> why you've picked Aaron Moy because um, you know I don't think this many, is the best player I've seen for Huddersfield him. Town in the last thirty years. That's why, <laughs> um, yeah, Aaron Moy because we currently don't really have a deep playmaker, someone who can play the ball from the eight position, and we really lack that since Carol Lighting's left. Uh, we'll see how Sinani gets on, but uh, for me, Aaron Moy, the best player we've had in the last thirty years, uh, and we 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 miss him every time every time we we step out onto the field since since he's gone. And even when he was with us, if he didn't play, we missed him. So, you know, it's, it's a tap in. It's easy. It's Aaron Moy and he's the best player we've had for a long time and probably will going forward. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's hard to argue. Legend. Um, come back, Aaron, if, if you listen to this. I mean, you definitely don't. But, um, you know, if you, uh, we do have listeners in, in China. So I, I, would, I would get on a flight to China and grab him and then put him back on a plane to... Huddersfield International Airport and uh, drive him back, drive a rental car back to the ground for him to sign. I genuinely would. Uh, he's, uh, he's exactly what we'd need in the midfield. Is Aaron Moyes? Um, 
I think what's even more impressive that he's willing to sign the contract after you've effectively kidnapped him. Uh, <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a hell of a talker, Matt. That's what it is. You convinced him. Yeah. Um, jo- Josh, who are you going for for former player? I suppose Aaron Moy is hard to top. There's not much point, is there? But I suppose I've got to pick one. So we're playing at Hillsborough. If, uh, yeah. if the game's tied or we're, we're behind, we could always say uh, we could do with bringing Colin Quainer on, couldn't we? It went all right last time. So. He's, he's my pick. He's a bit of a... Um, I never rated the guy, I won't lie, but he's, uh, I'm going for the, the populist vote. I know he's very popular, so... Um, yeah, I'm going for the... This is what Brady used to do. He used to yeah. go for the populist well, vote. Quayna, Hillsborough, I think I think he might get a few votes. Nowhere near Moy, but you know people might might uh, go for old Cole. Go on, Brady. Say Heffler and get it over and done with. No, no, no. I'm not going to say Heffler. Um, I'm going to... You know... Or Schindler. Go on. We don't. No, we don't. You don't want to go big, especially for a Carabao Cup game. You need to save it. I mean, you, it's all right for you. You're yeah, you've gone big. You've gone big early. Yeah, we, we need gone. to eat these out. I, I, I'm going to go for Carol Lighting um, because I, I agree with you, Matt. We kind of need to replace Lighting. So why not bring him back? I mean, Moy's a better player, but uh, I think showed in glimpses what he can do. And uh, yeah, we definitely miss that type. Though, yeah, we definitely do. Um, so yeah, Carol. Uh, who is, is obviously gone on to Genk, uh, so we'll see how he. I'd be interested to see how he gets on. I wonder if he, uh, you know, we I again hope does, seen. I hope he does well, mate. Because that knee, that I felt bad for him when his when his knee went for what was it, the second, third time. So, yeah, hopefully he gets a good run of games and gets himself uh, nice and fit to. Uh, good to play. player, very good player. Yeah. I just don't think championships are right league for him. Probably a bit too, we'll, probably a bit too heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, a bit of a crazy season. And I suppose if you've got a bad knee and drink, you know, double murder ball sessions is probably not uh, a good way to manage that. But anyway, we'll move on. Um, Josh, there is another section. Uh, this one could be a bit rude, you'd say. Is this is this the right the right thing? Is this correct? Okay, so we're going to call it X, XG rated. Um, XG is like, it's controversial. A lot of people don't like it. I used to think that I, was, I just think what you're talking about, load of nonsense. But then I started looking into it more, and I got a bit fascinated by it. Um, and there's actually a book called The Expected Goals Philosophy by James Tippett. Little uh, plug for him. Um, it's really interesting, and it um, explains what can be learned from these stats. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll do a little shorter version for this because obviously. We don't have any XG stats for this season, so we're basing it on um, last season. Um, and obviously, we're not in the same league either, and we've all got different players, and et cetera, et cetera. But just a, a little look at uh, last season. So uh, Wednesday, we're actually second bottom of the XG um, per game in the championship last season, 0.94. Um, town not much further ahead, 1.11. So, um, But both teams didn't create enough, as we've said. Um, uh, but in terms of Wednesday... Per home game, they're actually 14, so not actually too bad. Um, in ter- actually, that's in terms of goals against per game. So 14th is uh, not too bad, but Town were fifth um, XG against per away game. So that suggests that Town were conceding 1.5 goals per away game. Um, Wednesday were conceding 1.25 goals per home game. So based on that, you'd say um, Town's defence is uh, the leaker of the two. Um, and it's actually another thing called the, the home advantage table. And that uh, refers to the increased overall performance levels of each team when they play at home venue. And Sheffield Wednesday, although they got relegated, actually finished second in that table. So uh, they had, behind Watford, they had the, the second most home advantage based on the, the game's stats. So the fact that it's at Hillsborough, um, that, that might play a part. It suggests that they play much better at home uh, than away from home, but obviously not that much better because they they still got relegated. But but yeah, um, do you do you guys think that uh, our XG stats from last season um, is something that's uh, majorly concerning in terms of expected goals for? It was very low in most games, and that that does uh, tell the story of the lack of chances created. Is that something you want to see improved uh, this season? Definitely. I mean. Um... You know, I think you, you mentioned it, Josh. XG isn't everyone's favourite cup of tea. I, for some reason, I've got, um, I, I can just feel Cozzy, you know, chatting my ear. Like, I think he, uh, as far as I'm aware, he's not a big XG fan. But, uh, you know, it's mm. each their own. I think um, with these things, it's always kind of um, 
the stats can help you prove, you know, what you see as, as people tend to call the eye test. So I think most town fans would know we weren't, we were conceding a lot and uh, not scoring many. So, and the stats back that up. So, um, mm. yeah, I, I do mean, think, we, yeah. So, with, the, with the eye test, I do, I do get that as well. Um, but I think judging over the course of a season, I think um, the more chances you create, there's always an anomaly like, you know, Brighton had very high XG in the Premier League last season. But the teams that create more chances are going to score more goals, aren't they? Surely, so uh, that, that's why I, I think it is relevant. We can't just say it's low enough. Quality chances as well, Josh. Mate, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm all for, uh, I'm all for yeah, XG. Yeah, 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 for it. It, yeah. It grades, it grades the uh, the quality chances, as Matt says. But yeah, I think we, there are, there are think... a lot of holes in it as well, aren't there? There, there are genuine yeah. holes in it, such as mm. if a youth player makes his debut, there's no data modeling to go back on, so it can't really give him an accurate score for each, you know, opportunity that he gets and. There are other things like in the Premier League, we used to, uh, like Van La Parra and, and whatnot, used to smash the ball across the six yard box a lot, didn't they? And then there'd be no mm. one there. And for me, that's a chance. You know, if somebody makes the run and taps it in rather than stands, you know, stands without moving, there's, there's a lot of stuff like that it doesn't pick up on. But it's, so it's not perfect, but it's probably the best no. thing that's available at the minute, which we can, uh, can judge how fair the score is, if you like. Mm. And it also can judge, you know, what you, maybe what you should have got out of the game. So it's, it's useful. It's, interesting like brady says not everybody likes it and i understand why people don't like it um but yeah I, i'm i'm a bit of a stats geek so i quite quite find stuff like that quite interesting but yeah but but yeah. for me there's there's holes in it but it's improving a lot of the time and data modeling is always getting better as well so uh, by the end of this season you may see something else come through which is even yeah. more even more interesting so Nor- norwich as you'd expect they ended up with the highest overall xg but then blackburn came second in that so that yeah it does go to show there's anomalies but I think it's still a pretty decent guide, but obviously Bright, Brighton's a really good good mention, actually, Josh. Because uh, Dave, obviously, you know Dave Hartrick's, uh, you know, a mate of mine, and he he's a Brighton fan, and and he was saying all last season because I, I I really like Neil Maupay, you know, who they've got up front, and he was saying last year, well, you can have him, kind of, you know, and not so many sort of thing. You can have him if you want because you know we're we're missing so many chances, and you look at our XG here, it shows that we should be getting, you know, we shouldn't be fourth bottom or whatever they were at the time they should have, you know based on that they should have been sort of ninth tenth and it was like yeah. so it was quite interesting to see uh how the data backs up how he was feeling you know with mm. regards to missing missing sitters and perhaps we should have been winning more games than not and so it is it is interesting it does have a it does have a place i think so it's um but that yeah. that brighton example is, uh, is, is a good one yeah. definitely and you know we do like xg josh i'm gonna Make it clear I like XG, and it is a feature that's going to be on this every week. So we clearly like XG. So uh, do you like get me on XG, Brady? I don't know if you said right. Yeah. Um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll move on that because that if we, we were looking at jokes uh, for the expected lols on that joke, it was quite low, I think. So <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, so ahead of the uh, match against Sheffield Wednesday, I caught up with Ben Woodcock from the Sheffield Wednesday podcast, the Wednesday Week, and here's what he had to say. So Ben, thanks for joining us. Um, my first question, really: how, how are you feeling about Sheffield Wednesday ahead of the new season? I'm feeling quite positive, really, about the new season for Wednesday. I think Darren Moore's made some made some good signings that are good enough for you'd imagine, really, the championship. Never mind League One, like some of the players that we brought in. So that hopefully should have us in good stead, looking towards the top six at least uh, in League One. Off the pitch. We've been pretty steady, which <laughs> it hasn't always been that way for the last couple of years for, for Wednesday. So that over the summer has been somewhat relaxing, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, fa- fairly positive. It just could do with a striker. Other than that, we, it looks like an half-decent squad going into the season. So we'll just have to wait and see whether that squad gels. So how are Wednesday fans feeling about this cup game? Is it a distraction from the league or is it a chance to see how your new side will cope for the new season? I don't think Wednesday fans are really feeling, I think it's probably indifferent feeling towards this cup game. Maybe it's it's the first chance that we're all getting to, to go and watch Wednesday again back at Hillsborough. So I think there's obviously excitement about that as it's going to be for, for everybody going to... It might you know the first game in sixteen seventeen months that sort of feeling so obviously people are excited in that sense but the game itself I think may be a little bit of a you know last pre season game before the real stuff starts uh, the weekend after. 
You've signed a few eye-catching players, particularly for League One, um, but which signings have you been particularly impressed with? We have signed quite a few eye-catching players in League One. You know, Lewis Wing, done well for Middlesbrough when I'd ever I'd seen him play for Middlesbrough. Rotherham fans raved about him, even though they've come down with us for the, the spell that he had on loan with them last season. So I think that's a really good signing um, for, for the division. I'm really surprised that a championship club hasn't picked him up. Billy Peacock Farrell again, to, he played a few games towards the back end of the last season for Burnley. So to be able to bring him in in League One, uh, again, I'm surprised that we've we've been able to get him rather than him going to a championship side. I think Birmingham were, were in for him at some point. So the, 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 the last two signings we've made up to now, they're the ones that I'm probably most impressed with. But then the other signings we've made, uh, Shadipo uh, on loan from QPR, did well for Oxford last season in, in League One. Um, so, yeah, positive signings, really. Surprised that we've been so good in the transfer market because that's not always been the case in the last sort of five or six years while Chan Siri's been at the club but I think Darren Moore's by the looks of it hopefully turned that around a bit So Ben what are you expecting from the game against Huddersfield? Again what I'm expecting from the Huddersfield game is probably just that Final run out before the the league action starts. Probably a, you know a bit more competitive than the preseason games have been, but probably not the intensity that we'll see on the opening day of for you the championship season as League One. And my final question is, how do you see the game going? And if you had to give a score prediction, what are you going for? How do I see the game going? I'm not really too sure. Like, like I said, with it being that sort of preseason final game element to it. It could be a nil nil. You you might win, or you know, if you're not up to it, we could win. It it, it could go either way, really. I don't think either team would be too disappointed to lose. Obviously, you want to win every game, but it's not really a competition that either team will be probably looking to win. Um, and with us having the extra games in the what's now, I think, the Papa John's Trophy, we we'll, we we won't really be in need of any extra games. Score prediction from me would uh, probably be 1-1. One, one. Um, anyway, so we'll move on to uh, you're the boss. So uh, it, it was you're the coach before when Matt was in charge of this vehicle. We'll change it to you're the boss. Um, mm. So let's just say... You Carlos really went out on a limb with that one, didn't you, Brady, with, with putting your own mark on that particular... <laughs> you take... <laughs> you know, you take what works and you tweak it a little. That's, that's Well, all, all I'll say is... All I'll say is if someone gives you an instruction, you don't say you're the coach, do you? You'd say you're the boss. So I think you've this guy made the right knows. decision. This guy knows. Anyway, See what's you are the boss then, Josh. Uh, you are the boss in this scenario. You are in charge for the game on Sunday against Sheffield Wednesday. So I'll come to you first. First of all, I always ask this. Um, I think people get really bored by it, but I'm going to ask you. What's your, so if you're the manager for this game, you're going to tell me your formation and the players. But uh, what's going to be your pitch side attire? What are you going to be wearing for this? Pitch side attire. Oh, I've got to go suit, mate. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. Every suit match. manager. Even every Kyle match without fail. One. Setting yeah. the setting the standard for the for the team to follow. Um, yeah. Look smart, and uh, maybe maybe an overcoat in winter. But yeah, like a, a Mourinho in his when he first came through that sort of that sort of style. Stylish club tie or? Uh, just... Nah, no, nah, no. Nah, nah. I, I change yeah. the tie every week just to keep people guessing. Oh, nice. No, a bit like, well, I was going to say a bit like Carlos with his uh, chain as he did change him now and again. He did. Anyway, yeah. so, uh, yeah, so Josh, how you line up? So this, is, this isn't this is how you expect Carlos to line up. This is your formation. This is the team you play. So, so what have you gone for? Uh, yeah, I'd go 4-3-3. Three, three. Um, okay, so goalkeeper's a tricky one because I would like to see Nichols start the season. But I think whoever, I think as we've said earlier, whoever starts against Wednesday probably won't start the next week. So on that basis, I'm going to go with Schofield in goal. Uh, right back, uh, Pippa, because I think he needs, he needs minutes. Uh, left back, Toffolo. Centre backs, I would go with um, Colwell and Pearson. Um, Jonathan Hogg playing the six. Uh, O'Brien as an eight. Um, and then. I would go with, I'd put Scott High in there as well. 
Um, I think he's he's a player that I like, so that'd be my midfield three. Uh, he likes Holmes on the left, on the right, doesn't he? But I would put uh, Thomas on the right, Karoma on the left, and oh, I just don't see I I just don't see Rose fitting into this to be honest. But I'm going to go with uh, Ward up front. Lovely, Matt. Uh, so you're the boss, mate. Who are you going for? Uh, I go with, you see, I, I want to go and win this game, so I think I would probably pick the strongest um, strongest side possible. Uh, Sinani, I think I would come off, the, uh, bring him off the bench, you know, uh, bring him in gently. So uh, I think I would go with Nichols and goal. Uh, Pippa's got, he's, he's struggling a bit with his um, with his injury, so I'd probably get put Turton at right back, Toffolo left back. Pearson, and I think the League Cup's a good time to start Colwell. So I'd probably put Colwell in, uh, Hogg and Vallejo as a two in midfield. I do like Alex Vallejo. Um, I'd have Lewis O'Brien just slightly ahead of them in uh, in a sort of a midfield three. Uh, I would have Sauber Thomas on the left. I would have Josh Caroma up front. Mm-hmm. And I would have on the right-hand side, an interesting one for the right-hand side. It's a tough, uh, a tough pick. I'm half tempted to have Danny Ward cutting in from the right, you know, and have have a play with like three up top rather than a four one four one. So yeah, um, maybe maybe go with that, and then the the three can rotate up front, and Danny Ward can go up front if it's not working. Karoma left, Solomon's on his right, possibly. Fluid. What, so why are you thinking Karoma up front, Matt? Tell us your reasoning there. Yeah, I I look at our our striking options, and they just all scream of decent bench option to me. I. Don't really see them. See, uh, Danny Ward, you know, he's had his issues. You know, uh, you know, we all hope he gets back to being the Danny Ward he was at Cardiff. But for me, when he's played, he hasn't really linked it, pro- you know, linked the game particularly well. He's not run the channels great. Uh, Jordan Rhodes can't do that, and you can't play one up front. Although to be fair, actually, you know, if Sheffield Wednesday play three four one two, then we'll be playing three five two, won't we? So Jordan Rhodes could play up front with. With some with Caroma, maybe then Campbell. I think Campbell and Rhodes would be a good partnership. Campbell and Rhodes, potentially, yeah. Potentially, Campbell yeah. doesn't work. Rhodes, Rhodes taps him in. I just think with the the way that Carlos sets himself up, Caroma might just drop off Rhodes and then link it that way, and Rhodes just goes high. Mm. So yeah, and then then Caroma has to do the pressing from the front as well, and then drop off. So just Caroma probably be absolutely shattered after that. But uh, but yeah, I we'll probably probably go with that. Um, but I I just look at Rhodes and I think he's the type that you want to throw on. When you're attacking, you know, and you're throwing, you're putting balls into the box to try and get something. For me, Jordan Rhodes doesn't start. I thought against Southport in particular, he looked really sort of short of sharpness. Um, but that this is the thing with Jordan Rhodes; he's not an outside of the box footballer, and this is where I just don't see really how he fits in properly. I could see him coming off the bench to you know when we need a goal and maybe in a two, but. In Carlos's preferred system, I just struggle to see how he fits in. And Fraser Campbell, um, yeah, I can see Fraser starting, but again, you know, as he's as he's moving towards the back end of his career, you probably start thinking you probably want someone there who can do ninety minutes if you want them to. I have to agree about Rhodes. I I don't see him fitting into this this system that we've got. It's a bit very of the signings we've made, he's the one that I've. I found the most yeah. strange. It's the three, the three. Everything that we have kind of sets itself up nicely. Three five two, doesn't it? But from what we hear. Carlos wants to play the 4-3-3 and what he's been playing pre-season. But you look at a 3-5-2 and you think Colwell, that's great for him because he can push out with the ball, you know, he can carry it. Mm. Toffolo and Pippa are great going forward, so it gives them a lot of space mm. to move into. Thomas has played left wing back for uh, Boreham Wood as well. And then Rhodes is is perfect really for, you know, your, your men putting balls into the box and, you know, getting into areas to score goals you know, when it breaks and, and stuff with, with, with a partner. So... Maybe we'll fall on that later in the season. Who knows? But um, but yeah, that that's how it's fit together more more intuitively at the minute. But from what from what we know, Carlos wants to play the you know the four one four one slash four three three whatever you want to call it. Uh, yep. So for me, uh, not much has changed because Carlos plays four three three. I think I I do this even though it's my team. Uh, Nichols, uh, Turton. Because I agree, I don't think Pippers. Um, still kind of managing that, and I, I do think this is um, this is a game to kind of see the, the fringe players a bit more in a competitive game rather than pre-season. Uh, I won't call these fringe players, but squad players. Uh, Turton, so Colwell, I agree, Matt. I think it's a good game for him. Pearson, uh, I 
the, I kind of like him more and more of what I've seen with him. I think Ruffles, um, you know, I don't think we need to need to play Toffolo for this. Um, and then for me, I would put Holmes in midfield. I think this is a game to, to put him in midfield three. So uh, Hogg, uh, also O'Brien. So Holmes, Hogg and O'Brien for me. And then I've gone Thomas on the right, Ward in the middle and Chrome on the left. Um, with this team though, I would introduce Siano off the bench. Uh, I would also, uh, I don't know if he will play, but I th- I'm quite intrigued. I think me and you were talking about this, Matt. Uh, John Russell, who they've signed for the B team. Uh, so he was, it was signed for him from Chelsea. He's a box to box midfielder, but he can also play number 10. Um, I wonder if this is a game for him, you know, potentially just to see what he can do for 20 minutes, depending on how the game's going. But Maybe. We, we talked about a lack of creativity, and I, I kind of wonder if this would, you know, just just drop him in, get him some minutes, see how he copes. Uh, so that that would be that would be it. Um, but we'll close off with with match predictions for this. I feel like this has been a bit of a long preview. Um, I think this game's going to end in a draw. And then I think they go to penalties, don't they? So, so I'd say town to win on pens. Still the best uh, prediction. Oh, is that what you Still think? exact prediction, yeah. Because oh, I right. think in 2017. But I yeah. thought that they might get the penalty revenge actually this time. Oh. So you, what, so you're going 1-1 one, one in town to win as well? No, I'm going to go say town to lose just to be different to you and uh, lose on penalties. But the, the, Ooh, edgy. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, the other side of me would like to see us beat them on penalties just so we can kind of just point and just go, ah! <laughs> But you know that in that scenario, Kwan has got to come off the bench as well. So you know, we'll resign him just for this. An, an own goal and a penalty win would be uh, would be quite good. Would be the truth. Josh, what about you? Are you are you going for a, a draw and a penalty victory? Uh, or... I am actually. Yeah, I was, oh, yeah. I was genuinely. I was going to say. Yeah, is it? Does it go straight to penalties after ninety minutes? I think so. I mean, God hope so because it's right. you know no disrespect well, to the Carabao Cup, but come on. Yeah, I'm going nil nil. Nil nil. What's I yours, Brady? 1-1. One, one, uh, and Matt's also 1-1. One, one. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to score, I'm, though. We haven't named a score. I've, I've gone own goal. Okay. I'm going to go Pearson from a corner if Thomas is playing. I like. I, I am uh, warming to the sign of Matty Pearson. I think it could be quite Yeah, me too. I am as well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there we go. That's all fairly positive for us. Um, you know, what I would say is Tan ta- haven't kicked a ball yet for the season, so maybe that's why we're feeling positive, but we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, that was uh, the preview for for the Sheffield Wednesday uh, Cup game. Uh, obviously, Josh and I will be back next week to preview the season opener against Derby. Um, I think that is going to be going ahead. Wayne Bruni seems to be suggesting it's not. Um, good Depends game. if you injures, injured any more players in training, doesn't it? Well, you know, we've got a week away, so who knows what can happen, Derby. Yeah, I think there's some breaking news every week, uh, every day even, so uh, we will see. But yeah, thanks. Oh, and before we go, I've had a little little chat message pop up um, reminding us. Obviously, we do our predictions, um, but we're uh, apart from Matt, who hates uh, Fantasy Premier League, but we are doing some Fantasy Leagues this season. Uh, so we've got a takes that chance uh, Fantasy Premier League, because let's be honest, Town are going to be nowhere near the Premier League anytime soon, so why don't we get involved in the fun? Uh, and we've also got Gaffer, which is a championship fantasy league. So if you guys are, you know, you think you know your championship stuff and the best players in it, um, very similar to, to FBL, but just for the championship. So we've got a league for that as well. And uh, Matt will have a team for that, and we're also all going to set up a team soon. So, if you, so yeah, Premier League one and a championship one, you lucky devils. And um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. But yeah, no, thanks for listening. And like I say, Josh and I will be back next week to preview Derby. Oh, what a night. Late in May in 2017 Schindler scored, it was a happy dream What a feeling, what a night Oh, what a night Wagner singing, we are Premier League Greatest sights in Georgia Square did see What an evening, what a night Oh, I I got a funny feeling when he walks And a fence And then The commentator yelled he takes that chance Oh, what a night 
Lost so safe and mesmerizing me Low, low charge and flattens all Chelsea Stamford Bridge or water night Whoa, I I got a funny feeling when he walks And a fence And then The commentator yelled He takes our chance 